Breaking overnight on Denver 7 News at 6 a.m. after hours of discussion. The superintendent is essentially the CEO of district. Who is the candidate that's going to cause the least amount of continued turmoil? Douglas County decides on its new superintendent. The school board votes to give longtime favorite Aaron Kane the position. From Denver 7's Colette Bordelon, we have new reaction this morning from parents. Plus, help is finally on the way for homeowners who lost everything in the Marshall Fire. The next steps after a contract is finalized to clear debris. And a historic donation to help with Denver's affordable housing crisis. It's an amazing phone call and we hear that they are going to provide 13 and a half million dollars. The local nonprofit getting a big boost from a billionaire. Good news there, but first we are following some breaking news this morning out of New Orleans after a deadly now tornado touched down near the city. A local TV station captured the storm, the actual funnel there from one of their live cameras. Uh, a scary sight. We know one person has died in the storm. Many others are injured and as the sun starts to rise, we're getting a better idea of the extent of the damage. This is a live look right now from New Orleans. A home had its roof ripped off. Mm. You can see how much debris has been scattered everywhere. Officials say some homes in the iconic French Quarter were actually picked up off their foundations and are lying in the street. Uh, an, an awful situation. Mm. The same storm has hit Texas and Oklahoma, and we know uh, groups here, I'm sure, will be organizing to send help their way, but certainly our thoughts are with uh, people in those states hit by this uh, terrible storm. On a much smaller mm -hmm. scale, we're also dealing with wind here across parts of the metro. Yeah, I feel bad complaining about it. Now, Lisa, let's uh, talk about this, though. We have some gusty weather in the forecast today. Yeah, all part of the same system. We're really on the far western edge now of that storm. You can see it now pushing into the Great Lakes, but we do have a line of, again, a bit more severe weather. Yesterday had over 30 uh, tornado reports. Here at home, the winds will be gusty behind this. Behind the storm, we're going to see speeds upwards of around, oh, 40 to even 60 miles per hour across the the plane. So you could see some damaging winds with that. Right now, the strongest gust there in Lyman, almost 40 miles per hour. Same thing there over Berthoud Pass. So expect a windy but sunny and warmer day today in store. Yesterday was still on the chilly side. Today we're going to be in the mid to upper 40s here between about 11 and 12 o'clock, and then we'll get into the 50s this afternoon. We've got Denver at right around 53 to near 58 degrees, depending on the neighborhood. In the mountains, you're going to find some 30s and even low 40s. We are all in for a really Really big warm up here over the next few days from 70s across the plains to 50s and even 60s. Jason in the high country will take a closer look at this weekend warm up coming up. Overall, the drive doesn't look too bad for us here this morning as we're getting busier on the in the usual spots, whether it's here along I 76, as you can see from Air Tracker 7, there's I 76 going down to 270 and then making that transition over to I 25. There would be 270 right in here. I 25 is be right in here going right up by Highway 36. So Air Tracker 7 says it's a little bit too bumpy for them, and so they're be landing at Rocky Mountain Metro Airport in a minute. Uh, take a look at the uh, overall drive. We do have one crash over in Cherry Creek over at 3rd in Colorado, causing most of the southbound side to be delayed, but really not worth an alternate route at this point. The rest of the drive looks pretty nice anywhere you want to go. We still have that railroad work that's happening up there in Broomfield that has 287 north of Miramonte closed down. I'll have a look at that for you coming up in just a bit and also the ways folks are getting around it in just a minute. Breaking overnight, the third largest school district in Colorado has a new superintendent. The vote to name Aaron Kane as the sole finalist came after hours of public comment at last night's school board meeting. Yeah, Denver 7's Colette Bordelon joins us live this morning. Colette, more than 100 people signed up to share their opinions about the choice. A long meeting last night, that's for sure. And in that same meeting where the board voted to hire Kane as that next superintendent. They also voted to hire a team of attorneys to potentially prep them to defend against an open meetings lawsuit that's been filed related to the controversial firing of former superintendent Corey Wise. Now, Corey Wise's attorneys are requesting any and all communications from within the district related to Wise. Right now, Kane is the executive director of schools for American Academy, a public charter school with three campus locations. She's also served as the 
interim superintendent for the Douglas County District from 2016 to 2018. At the beginning of the month, during her public interview, she pledged to execute the will of the board, change the culture of the district, and empower teachers. When the new majority on the school board took over, there were allegations their decision to fire Wise was politically motivated. Protests and support of Wise by teachers, parents, and students swept through the district. But Kane says she doesn't see the need for political parties and school leadership. We can't change the conflict that's in our world or in our country, but I think we can work right here in Douglas County if we all work together to listen to each other, understand each other's concerns. Um, and I, I would be privileged to lead bridging that divide. I do think we can absolutely bridge the divide and move forward for the thing that we all have in common. Our common cause is and always has been our students. That's Kane speaking right after she heard the board's vote. Now, we did talk with other parents who aren't happy with the board's decision, specifically the way they say they went about it. They say that's no lesson they want their kids to learn. I'm not as confident in her ability um, to, to run um, the school district in the long term as I would be with the other candidate. Was going up against Danny Windsor. He's the executive director of the Parker region of Douglas County School District. Now, even though Kane did eventually beat out Windsor in that vote by the board, some board members argued Windsor would have been the less divisive choice out of the two. Live this morning, Club Board on Denver 7. Lead 67,000 students now. Well, people in Boulder are taking time to pause and reflect this week on the 10 lives lost at the Table Mesa King Supers one year ago. Yesterday's remembrance ceremony included this in Boulder's Central Park, and one of the attendees was Olivia. I think this, and I think a lot of people affected by this, we all just find ourselves coming back to the feeling and that we just never knew this could happen. Like we didn't, had no idea. There was no gut feeling. There was no intuition. This just took our breath away. This like punched us in the gut. That was Olivia McKenzie. Her mom, Lynn Murray, was killed uh, while filling an Instacart order. Meanwhile, there was a separate memorial at the Boulder Police Department to honor Officer Eric Talley, who was killed responding to the shooting. Congressman Jason Crow and Joe Nagoose both attended. The service included a final radio call to Officer Talley. Officer Talley's patrol vehicle has also been on display at the Boulder Police Department since last Friday, and it's been adorned with flowers, cards, and messages of hope. Victims of the Marshall Fire have waited months for debris removal to finally start, and now Boulder County has approved the contract with the company that will be in charge of that process. Denver 7's Christian Lopez joins us in the newsroom. And Christian, we finally have a timeline of the next steps and when this will get started. Yeah, and people have been waiting for this so they can finally start to rebuild. Marshall Fire victims can soon expect to see arborists, inspectors, and other staff getting their properties ready for the cleanup. This work will take about one to two weeks before heavy machinery moves in to clear everything out. And once this starts, the program will last about four months. And commissioners also approved a recommendation to bring in another company, Tetra Tech, based in Denver, that will perform soil sampling after debris removal is done to make sure there are no hazardous contaminants like heavy metals on these properties. If all goes according to plan, the main contractor, DRC, is still hoping to have the cleanup done by the end of July. And this contract total is around $60 million. Boulder County will host an online community meeting on Tuesday, March 29th to answer any questions about advanced prep work and scheduling. Live in the newsroom this morning, I'm Christian Lopez, Denver 7. In less than an hour, President Biden will depart for Europe to meet with world leaders about the war in Ukraine. NATO and European Union officials will attend a summit in Brussels tomorrow. They're expected to announce a new round of economic sanctions against Russia. The president could also announce a permanent increase in the number of U.S. troops stationed in Eastern Europe. Overnight, Ukrainian troops celebrated a victory. They have reclaimed an important suburb of Kyiv from Russian forces, as well as a key highway. Uh, it allows Ukraine to block Russia from surrounding the capital city. A senior U.S. defense official says the Russian military has lost 10 percent of its combat power in Ukraine. That's an estimated 15,000 soldiers. Troops are also reportedly running low on food, fuel and cold weather gear. It's going to be a, a warmer day today. Still pretty windy, though. Take a look at our wake up forecast this morning down to near freezing early on. We're going to be in the low to mid 40s by about 10 o'clock and a nice warm up closer to 50 here by early afternoon. 
A good 10 degrees warmer tomorrow. We'll take a look at that and when we're going to hit 70 here in town coming up. And right now the drive overall, even including here on the side streets, look great. This is um, South Broadway in Inglewood, the southbound side, the northbound side coming up here from just north of Hampton. Wide open, nice and dry. The winds are going to be a problem for us in some areas. We'll take a look at that coming up in just a bit. Colorado lawmakers are considering new rules for rideshare companies and it could cost you more to get a ride. Plus, as the Metro faces an affordable housing crisis, one local nonprofit is receiving a multi-million dollar gift to build more homes.